Hey everyone, we're on to our second day of talking about waves. And so our next one is talking about electromagnetic waves, but more specifically we're talking about light. Uh, but we're going to set up our page first, so we draw our line along the side for, for Cornell notes. So we got one across the top, and then another one, and then the side thing. So we got our name up top. And then the date, which is 3, 16, oh, 21. Okay. And then we have our topic for today, which is light. And then our essential question is probably how do we get color? Let's try that. How do we get color? And that should answer be answered today. Okay, so our first word is actually the other kind of light that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, so the first one was mechanical waves, and that was something that needed matter or a medium to travel through. But our next one is electro magnetic oh oh I spelled that wrong whatever I wish I had an eraser electro magnetic don't mind that all right electromagnetic it is one word and it's waves electromagnetic waves all right these do not require matter in order to travel or carry energy. More importantly. Okay, so examples of this we have radio waves, microwaves, like what is in your microwave, and light, which is pretty cool. So this is a vocab word, electromagnetic waves. And then there's something that goes along with that. Uh, it's the electromagnetic spectrum. So electromagnetic spectrum. There's an E. Spectrum. So this is all possible ranges there. All possible ranges of, <laughs> so there might be a key, uh, or a way to shorten this, I'm going to put EM, electromagnetic waves. Hopefully you guys understand that. <laughs> um, and more importantly, the vibrations of the electric and magnetic fields. So there's an electric field and a magnetic field and this works by those vibrating just like um, air vibrates to carry sound. So this does the same thing with like light or microwaves. So there's this really cool spectrum, um, and there's this huge range of different things depending on the wavelengths. Uh, how do we get color? So light is the one we're kind of kind of talk about. So let's talk about light. So it's electromagnetic 
radiation that is visible to the eye. And we can break this up into seven main colors. And I'm sure you guys know those colors, right? Let's see, it's, shoot, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Roy G. Biff. I don't know why we count violet. It's not really one of them. Whatever. So, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So, light's got a cool property. Um, it's something that can be reflected. Uh, so can sound waves, we call that an echo, but we'll get to that later. Uh, but light can be reflected. What does that mean? Reflection. So if you look into a mirror, you will see a reflection. So, in this case, a wave strikes an object or surface and bounces off. Now, that seems pretty obvious, right? But that's important for some other things. <laughs> because that allows us to get color. So color, so it depends on the electromagnetic spectrum, but the color we see is the color that is reflected. I wish that would have fit up there. Whatever. So if I have an object, for example, an apple, that is an apple. It's a beautiful apple. Thank you. And I have all the different colors of light. The one that bounces off is red. All the other ones are absorbed. Absorbed? Absorbed. How do you spell absorbed? Absorbed? That's an odd word. I don't use that very often. Now, we also have a different word than reflection. It's when it goes through like glass, for example, or water. When you look at uh, an object underwater, it's not always where it is actually underwater. It's a little bent. Um, so what we call that is actually refraction. Refraction. So refraction is the bending of light or waves, say waves, as it moves from one medium to another. So for example, if I have a box or a prism, I guess would be cool. If light goes in like this, it might bend a little bit like that and then come back out the same angle, which is kind of cool. So it'll be like a, a prism. And if you have uh, a triangular prism, then it actually splits the colors so that we can see a rainbow, which is pretty neat. All right. I think that's all we have for 
that, or like at least that will fit. Um, you know, actually, no, that's not true. We can. There's two other things that we need to put on here. So we have. Uh, I don't have room. This is, this is awkward. I drew too big of a picture. Just put it over here. Convex and concave. There are two different kinds of lenses. So a convex one is like this. It's rounded out. And a concave is like this. And they do two very different things to light. A convex lens is like a magnifying glass, but a concave lens actually flips it. So it uh, makes it almost see, seem further away, but it's also upside down, which is interesting. So this one is like a cave. Con, cave, cave, get it? Okay. That is all for light. So go ahead and copy this down, and I'll have you guys probably email it to me or put it in Schoology. See you later.